This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Yes, our friends at Squarespace. Get started with a free trial at squarespace.com with no credit card required. Squarespace recently launched the latest version of their platform, Squarespace 7, which is a completely redesigned interface, new templates, and an incredible feature called Cover Pages. Making a website has never been easier. Now, when you're ready to purchase a plan, get 10% off with the offer code RU. That's squarespace.com, offer code RU. This episode is brought to you by Dr. Jen's House of Beauty. Now, they're a great company out of Seattle, Washington that makes healthy, non-toxic skincare and cosmetics in colors you'll actually want to wear. Now, they are a favorite with the queens. I know Jinx Monsoon wears their products. And Michelle is the one who actually told me about them because they're really great and all natural. All natural products and beauty on top of that. They also have a sense of humor about their products such as Optimus Primer. I love that. And Lacrisse Royale Contour Palette named after, of course, Latrice Royale. Now for a 15% discount, go to AtomicCosmetics.com and enter the offer code RU. That's AtomicCosmetics.com, offer code RU. What do you want? What's the tea? You tell me what's the tea? What's the tea? You tell me what's the tea? What's the tea? You tell me what's the tea? What's the tea? You tell me what's the tea? Hey, kitty girl. Hey, pretty girl. How are you? <laughs> you? Oh, is that my name now? Granny girl? Yeah. Well, yeah, we got to replace. Yeah, we got to replace that. Well, people love the fact that we were, instead of uh, the T word, mm-hmm. we're saying the G word. Well, what's better than saying granny girl? I don't think anything is better than saying granny girl. Season eight. You know, hey, I'm a, because I'm a granny chaser. Okay, that's uh, Yes. Granny chaser's up in here. You are listening to RuPaul What's the Tea with Michelle Visage. And, you know, we, we, we've got a very lovely guest today and you, you all know who she is is mariah say the names all three names mariah for paris balencia ga, 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 ga. uh-huh mm-hmm. of course from season what season was she on mariah was season f- f- four i'm gonna four. say four yeah three four it would be four was yeah it four yeah yeah okay. i'm terrible with that so i if- no listen I'm on tour with them and I always go from season four and everybody comes out and they're like, she's on season five. <laughs> you don't realize how it all just starts to mut. And I don't, I'm not mad at them for, no. for being. No, no, it's great. No, yeah. they, they're, they're really invested in that. What's funny is, you know, I watch Judge Judy every day and whenever a, a, a case. Season three, I was right. Thank you. Oh, she is season Thank three? Thank you, mother. Uh, um... Mother has arrived. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you can get an Ornacea head for your um, next event. That is like a one. great Great gift. It's a great, great gift. Bring me the head Still of available. Ornacea. What's her last name, Orna- Ornacea? She didn't have she a didn't last, last name. name. She didn't have a last name. I was thinking, you know, there's that movie called Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia. So she's now Ornacea Garcia. Yes. Bring me the head of Ornacea Garcia. Hashtag didn't sell them all at Halloween. <laughs> Still available on Vivacious's website. <laughs> but that, actually, that's not a bad last name for Ornacea. No, it's perfect. Ornacea, Ornacea Garcia. Garcia. It was br- brilliant. Yeah. Meanwhile, I was going to say, in terms of remembering, on Judge Judy, whenever two litigants, uh, uh, the, the man never can never remember the date. She always goes to a woman and goes, okay, what was the date? And the woman says, oh, it was March 23rd, yes, yes. 19, you know. We don't forget those things. I was going to say 19. That 19 wouldn't, it would have been 20. <laughs> 2000. Yes. 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 yes but I mean, I've, I'm terrible with dates and, and, and chronological stuff. What about you? I, me too, because it's a numbers thing. I'm terrible with them. Um, yeah. I've had contracts to look at and I'm like, no, 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 there's too many words. And my right. husband gets so mad at me he's like it's your livelihood i'm like right. but i have you and you get those numbers but you know if I, I look at it i can you know if, but if i look at it i can i'm well i do well i if i somebody tells me over the phone or they ask me out of the blue it's so abstract for me i can't even remember a phone number like yeah. if somebody says yes you'll have to call 800 blah 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 blah, blah, blah and i go oh, oh, oh. Say it again. What? Like if right. I don't write it down, I'm terrible. I well, have no memory. What does that well, mean? I don't know. You you are an artist. You see things visually, and and I know that's I. If I see it, I can remember it. Like if a number looks pretty, 
And the shape of the number is gorgeous. I will remember the number. But if they're funky numbers, I won't remember them. But even them. learning words, words to songs, it's, I do not learn yeah. things easily. I don't know if it's because it's a learning disability, which I was told I had, but never really, you know. Yeah, I my mean, guess is that you, it was all the uh, tabs of antacid you did in the 70s. That was, made those Tums really get a number. <laughs> They really did a number on my brain, for sure. Yeah. Now, speaking of back then, now um, a lot of people don't know that you have a history in the house, um, in in the sort of um, voguing house world. Yes. From yes, um, which you know goes back many decades, but your era of the house because I we I saw you at the love ball uh, it was Suzanne Barsh's yep. love ball yep. that's right um, which was that was 89 yep how long had you been in the house ball scene at that point I think I started in the ballroom scene in 1987 because mm. 86 I started going out and meeting everybody but I don't think my real first ball was until 87 I, I think because 86 I graduated high school in June and I moved to New York City that following September. And then at towards the end of that month, I turned 18. So I think it was either, I think it was probably 87 because I started going to the underground and I started, that's where I met my first house, my first yeah. family. The first time where I really felt like I belonged. What house was that? It was, well, it was a whole bunch of different people that hung out. It wasn't the extravaganzas. It was this group of people. And they, we ended up making our own house was the Manifique's. Manifiques. I, I venture to say that that house didn't last very long. It's still around. I Manifiques? believe the Manifiques are still around. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So um, that's how that all started. Yeah. And um, we started this house. It was a new house on the scene. And the house to be was extravaganza. No, they had all the best members. And I secretly wanted to be an extravaganza. But I was new on the scene. And I had to prove myself. And um, I became pretty confident when I... The first time I ever walked a ball was by accident. I became a voguer. You tripped and fell on the floor. I, I was wish it was that easy. <laughs> Caesar Valentine, who... I remember Caesar. Caesar Ninja. Yeah. Um, was in the house of Ninja. And you know who Caesar's still around. An amazing teaching Vogue at Paradance and all these places in New York City. Um, one of the best voguers ever on the scene to this day. We were. He knew how good I was. I had learned from him and I had learned from Willie. We were at a ball and Caesar didn't even... Like, I didn't even say I was competing. He literally just pushed me and said, uh -huh. go. And uh -huh. I was like, what the? And that's how it happened. And who gave you the name Visage? I gave myself the name. Okay. I didn't. You didn't know this story? No. Okay. I was sleeping with, I mean, working with um, <laughs> yes, of Curtis course. Mantronic. Uh, oh, Mantronic's from, right. uh, yeah. From the, the, the needle to the groove. And he, he also did um, All theory. in All. All in All. He did do All in All. With, my favorite um, song of all her name, time. Um, Joyce Sims. Joyce Sims. And you're the love of my life. You're yeah. the love of the I, but all in all is my favorite Mantronic song. It's, listen, it's the soundtrack to my high school. Yeah. There'll never be a song. There's a lot of songs from that era that mean something to me. A yeah. lot of obscure ones. Don Quixote. Mm -hmm. Like really weird records. Sidewalk talk. Oh, yeah. But all in all means more to me than all of them. Oh 99 and a half. Yeah. We're talking. Oh, yeah. That, that, the Carolyn, 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 Carolyn Towns. Towns right. Yes. Carolyn Towns. Pamela Stanley coming out of hiding. Yeah. There's a lot of songs <clears throat> that mean a lot to me, but all in all probably means the most. Oh, my God. That UK remix. Oh, sometimes it comes on shuffle in the car. Those horns. Oh, my. Oh, my God. Do you not God. scream every time you hear I it? I do. Yeah. I do. And you know what? When I was making the, the Star Booty album, the first one in... 86 with Randy and Venton, who we work with today still after all these years. That was the song that was played. That and Dar, Brax, Dar Braxton uh -huh. Jump, Jump Back. Back. Yeah. Um, those were the two songs that, that sort of song? dictated what we were doing in yes. the studio. Yes. Yes. You know? Yes. But so you were working with, um, quote unquote, uh, Mantronics. Uh -huh. I wonder God. if he still got money, if he gets money from all those records. I don't know if he, he DJs now. And he's, he, last time I heard, was living in London. Mm -hmm. Like had gotten divorced. He's living in London. Well, he was living in London, DJ. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't know if he's producing, but he's super sexy. And when I first met him, I was like, I don't know what he looks like. Oh my God, he's gorgeous. Who he's would like play Lebanese. Him? Um, he's a lesbian. I know. Who knew? Uh. Um, mm, there's a British actor that was in the movie. Oh, is that that Mark? Um, uh, that Mark with the shaved head who's in everything. What's his name? Mark. Um, his head is not shaved. He has curly hair. Hold uh, on. Let me uh, think of the movie. Uh -huh. The movie is called The Holiday with Kate Winslet uh -huh. and Cameron Diaz. Yeah. The guy she's in love with, the curly hair. He looks like him with not, not that Jude crazy Law. hair. Not Jude Law. No, God. No. He's so sexy, though. Uh -huh. I fell back in love with him after watching The Holiday on the plane. Uh -huh. Jude Law. Uh -huh. He was totally off my radar. Yeah. Fell but there's another in guy in The Holiday. Yes. 
who is a sexy guy. Curtis uh, is so sexy. Curtis Mantronic. I did. I thought he was a brother. He's like, no, he's like Lebanese. He's like Middle Eastern. Lesbian. I'm telling you. I'm going to look him up now while I tell you my story. Uh. So um, I met him through, we had uh, attorneys, same attorney. Uh-huh. And we met each other and we started. Not Larry H. Parker. No, no, <laughs> not Larry H. Parker. Sure. <laughs> Is that Mantronic? Yes, Rufus Sewell. See, Rufus. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That's who Curtis Mantronic looks oh, like. Oh, my God. Oh, he's gorgeous. Oh, I know oh you'd God, love him. I love him. Yes, I know you do. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. So um, we started working together and. Um, Rufus Sewell. Yeah. Sewell. That has that. That's Curtis Mantronic. That's Mantronic? Isn't he gorgeous? My God, he's gorgeous. He's super gorgeous. Wow. Yeah. So you were uh, working with him? Uh-huh. 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 Did you get any overtime? Uh, I clocked in many hours overtime. Uh, trust. Trust me. Oh, my God. So I would hot. think you'd need some workman's compensation for that one. <laughs> really good friends too out of all that we realized we were better as friends but he yeah. was working on my demo my demo oh, I bet he was he was working on my demo with me <laughs> and I think I Dallas had dated him once too which was really really funny uh. so anyway long story longer um, he said look what's your name gonna be because Michelle Shupak ain't gonna cut it and I was like mm. I know so they used to call me, you know, I told you this on driving the RuPaul drives. Uh-huh. They used to call me cara, cara, cara. Because when I walked the balls, it was for face. Yeah. Cara means face in Spanish. Uh. But Michelle Cara wasn't right either because I had cara on the back of my jacket. If you watch the two to make it right seduction video. Yeah. I have a white leather jacket on the back. It says cara in big How do you spell letters. cara? C-A-R-A. Okay. So I'd walk down the street and people would be like, cara, cara. I'd be like, um, I do not even look like a cara. <laughs> Why are you calling me cara? <laughs> So Visage meets face in French. And I took French for six years. So I said, Michelle Visage. Not even thinking twice about all the people who screw it up and go, Michelle Visage, uh-huh. Michelle Visage. It's the most difficult to put the S and the Sh together. Well, no, you're right. And I've, I've joked about it. But it's not as difficult as other names that do that. I, I think it's a beautiful name. It works well for you. It, well, thank you. So that's Michelle where, Visage. Michelle Visage. Michelle Visage. And that's where Visage came about. And Curtis was like, I love that. Uh-huh. That's perfect. Yeah. So he loved it. He loved my vagina. So everything was well, great. It's, everything is perfect in yeah. the kingdom of uh, Mantronics yes. Massage. And he lived right down the street. I lived on Mulberry and Houston and he lived literally one block over on Houston and whatever. Wow. So it was just perfect. I would walk over there after my job at the you office. Know, all this time, it never occurred to me that he, that he, I just assumed he was this, you know, brother from Harlem or Brooklyn or something. Uh-huh. Mantronics. You know, isn't he hot? Really hot. I I wonder what he looks like now. Probably still hot. He's tall too. He's like six three. Really? Yeah. So I know you'll like him even more if he's tall. So that's so that's how you got into the whole. uh, That's how my name happened, and the whole ballroom thing happened from from Caesar and Willie. Really, Mm -hmm. Um, this one dark skinned Puerto Rican boy named David, who's who I found first. I had my hair slicked back, and he used to wear like this fake spit curl in the front. Yeah, this Spanish number, and he was like, "Girl, who are you? Come over here. Come here. Come over." Uh So I would go over, and I'm like, "What are you doing? What? What is that thing?" You're doing. And they're uh-huh. like, girl, it's voguing. And I was like, teach me now. Wow. And that's how it started. And David was like, girl, you're good. You can do this. Because uh-huh. you didn't see girls doing it. Yeah. You know, you saw femme queens and you saw queens. And but not queens. biological. Not biological. So there right. were a few hags here and there trying. <laughs> but I wanted to take it to another level. So I would do it in mini skirts and not open my legs and be all nasty about it. I uh-huh. would be, I'd keep it real as we say it in this industry, keep it real cunt. Uh-huh. So that's how it real started for me. And that's when Caesar and Willie were like, she's got it. This is something yeah. magical right here. Wow. And that's when I started walking balls because they were like, you are so different than anybody else. Mm-hmm. And I was a girl from Jersey. You know, I didn't look as trans as I look now. <laughs> I've grown in. I've transitioned into my tran, 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 tranlyhood. Right. Or grands. Grandlyhood. Yeah. Grands, yeah. <laughs> so that's how that all happened. And then I became a peer queen. I was hanging out at the piers every single day on Christopher Street. What was the Christopher Street piers? Yeah. With all of them. With Octavia. With Venus. With, with Angie. With all of them. Oh my God, what a great time that was. Yeah. You know, uh, I, you know, I used to sleep out on the piers. You know, we were, um, everybody did girl. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was, it was brilliant. There used to be a club right at the corner of, of the West Side Highway and Christopher called Jack Rabbits. Jack Rabbits. I remember the spider. Peter Rabbits. Peter Rabbits. And then Hawthorne, remember Horatio, 110 Horatio. There was another. Wee Hawken. 
No. Weehawken's the city in New Jersey. Yeah, no, there is a Weehawken Street that's right there. It's called Weehawken Street because I used to live right there on 10th Street. I know. Street. What was yeah. the name of the club? The the club was Peter Rabbit. Oh, okay. But it, I, it's where the dugout was. Uh, Remember uh-huh, all that uh-huh. stuff, you know? And then we carry on at Florence. Yes. And then after Florence, we'd go down to the pier with our boombox, uh-huh. be voguing and carrying on till five or six in the morning. Did I ever tell you the story of what I was in Florent once in 1990 with, and uh, our, 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 our Dallas was in there with this other guy uh-uh. and these um, mafia hoods came in and wrecked the place. Are you kidding me? And no. you and I, Dallas, were both in there? We were both in there. I've never spoken with her about this. I don't... I, Dallas, from Seduction, and then she went on to be a, v, a yeah, MTV v- VJ. Yes, yes. But these uh, mafia guys came in in there and... Um, For real mafia? Yes. Like they, thugs? They were thugs. I, I shouldn't say the word mafia. They were just thugs. They came in and Waste busted the place up. Shut up. Yeah. And um, everybody, all the customers in there sort of scattered and ran. Because they didn't know what was going on. No, we didn't know what was going on. Didn't know what was going on. But That's they, crazy town. That crazy? And I, because I was friends with the waiter and uh, he ended up uh, getting hurt. I, I just sort of scurried yeah, to the yeah. back of the, back in the kitchen or something like that. And uh, um, we ended up taking the, the waiter that I was friends with to St. Vincent's because wow, he's got a gash. He, he got a gash on his forehead. Uh, Florence is a place that we used to eat after the clubs would close. We would go there, and then when that was too crowded, we'd go to Round the Clock. Remember Round oh, the Clock? Oh, yeah, Round the Clock, yeah. Because they had really yeah. good matzo bowl soup. Yeah. Oh, Because yeah. that's what we do. It's good to know. Those were the good city days. Yeah. And then I became a peer queen and lived on the piers, but that's when I would see you because we'd see each other not just at the piers, we'd see each other at the club, and it was kind of like you had your thing, and I was voguing, and I had mine. So we were with a different group, but I always, you were always on my radar. Yeah. I remember seeing you like a block from Florent at this party. Um, it was at the court on West Side Highway on that same street. What street? Is that Gansevoort? The, the Florent was on Gansevoort. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. This was the next block down, um, right on West Side Highway. There was a party on the ground floor of a building. I know exactly what you're talking about. In this, in this place. And I, I remember you seeing there? you there. I was, and you know who was there that night? Uh, who asked me to go home with him? Huh? Dolph Lundgren. Ooh, you should have. I know, because he's a big old fat yeah. glove. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah. Ouch. Talk about workman's compensation. Want to know why I didn't? Because uh. he was really cocky, and that, that threatened me a little bit. Do you remember when we interviewed him on the radio? He wouldn't ask he was? He was such an asshole. Yeah. Um, we, That's it, why. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he, you know, he's Scorpio, too, just like me. Scary. Yeah. Um, uh interviewed him at KTU in 97. No, it was 96 because he was doing something for the Olympics uh-huh. in Atlanta. He, he was, was. Go- he was heading, he was doing some type of triathlon or something to do with the Olympics and sports. <laughs> that was very specific. Very specific. You know, I wanted to get all up in that and see. Oh what- my God. I would, I would pay money to watch. I couldn't do it though. Cause the way he came over to me, he said, I won you to meet me and he told me to come out and meet him in his limo instead of walking out with me and I thought right. that was gross yeah so maybe he had was married I don't know I don't know what it was it just right. felt wrong so I didn't do it and I Dallas is like are you gonna go I'm like you know what I'm good for hoeing around mm-hmm. but this one's scaring me he's just gonna use like it was so right. obvious what it was yeah that I didn't do it was he Swedish or Scandinavian or something what is he Dolph Lundgren that would that be sounds like Norway. I or bet he's Denmark, Norwegian or, or something. Sweden, one of them. He's, he'll he's just a Viking. always be Ivan Drago to me. That's yes. Norway. Yeah, yeah. Hey, all right. So that was your. So I can't wait to ask about. <laughs> Talked about being a ball queen. Well, no, I, I, it's it's an interesting story, and of course, every, most people know about the ball experience of the movie Paris is Burning. A lot of people, but yeah. that's, and that's only a portion of it. It did show a lot, but mm-hmm. there's so much more to the lifestyle of being in a family and mm-hmm. being part of the ball scene because it's so important to these kids. Mm-hmm. They work all year for these balls. At least they used to. I don't know if it's the same. I'll have to ask Mariah because she's, mm. um, Mariah spent more time uh, more recently. Right. She's connected to the. Than, than not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's connected to the, the current ball scene. Swedish. Oh, he's Swedish. Yeah. yeah. Like that Alex Skarsgård. Uh-huh. Yeah. Have you ever been to Sweden? No, but I'd like to. <laughs> God, if they all look like them. Dolph Lundgren. You know how hard that was for me to say no? I've uh, said yes to way less. Yeah, I Way know, yeah. bargain basement. <laughs> way. <laughs> Embarrassing. But you know, just because say, you got to trust your instincts about people. And you're, you're usually right about that. You know, you have to um, go with your gut. Yeah. You know? So. All right. So when we come back. Yes. We're going to talk to Mariah Paris 
Balenciaga. Balenciaga. Yes. <laughs> Now, before we speak with Mariah, let's take a second to talk about Squarespace. Now, we've received some more great emails at RuPaulPodcast at gmail.com and tweets about your Squarespace websites. Now, this is an email from Hamish Disdale. It says, Dear Ru and Michelle, let me start by saying we love you guys. And when I say we, I mean ha myself, Hamish, and my best buddies, Amy and Michael. We just graduated from Winchester School of Art, majoring in graphic arts. During the last few months of uni, we discovered RuPaul's Drag Race on Netflix and have since become addicted to the show, the podcast, and we're hoping and praying that you guys come to England and host the UK edition of the show with Jonathan Ross. Fingers crossed, me too. I would love to do that. Anyway, he goes on to say, I also wanted to let you guys know that Amy, Michael, and myself are all users and lovers of Squarespace. Yay! As creatives, it's important for us to have an online presence to promote ourselves. We have used Squarespace to create professional-looking portfolios, which are extremely easy to update. We would love for you guys to have a look at them. I really hope this email reaches you. We would love, love to, to hear from you and get a response from you guys. We love you, hunties. Hamish Dinsdale. I will definitely look at your websites. They are hamishdinsdale.com. It's H-A-M-I-S-H -H, Dinsdale. MichaelTaylorDesign.co.uk. And Amy's is amyharwood.com. You kids are so talented. I'm so proud of you. I'm so glad that you guys are using Squarespace. And you're right. It is so easy to use. Every creative person should get on board with Squarespace for a free trial with no credit card required. Just go to squarespace.com. And when you've blown away and ready to confirm a plan, use the offer code RUE to get 10% off. Not bad, right? You'll be getting a great deal and helping keep What's the Tea free. Thanks again to Squarespace and keep sending in your websites to RuPaulPodcast at gmail.com. That's squarespace.com, offer code RU. Hey, we are back with our special guest, Mariah. Just say Mariah. Mariah. Because, you know, when people have three names, my brain freezes up. Right. It freezes up because I think it's going to miss some syllables. And how many syllables are in it? Let's count. Okay. Uh, Mariah. Ma -ra yeah. That's three. Paris, Paris five, Balenciaga, ten, ten, ten so, syllables. Yeah, my brain just it gives up on about the fourth syllable. You well, know, I've actually cut down to just Mariah Balenciaga. Uh, a lot of people don't know that Paris is not my middle name. That's my drag family name. Uh -huh. Right, Balenciaga is my house family name. Uh huh. Wait a minute. Okay. Uh, so when hmm. I Two when different I things. did my Facebook page, it was actually in parentheses, but everybody just thought it was a southern thing. And Mariah Pierce Balenciaga. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Wait a minute. Back up again. Okay. You, your drag. Your drag name is what? My my drag family name is Paris. Okay. So it's Mariah Paris. Oh, okay. And then, you know, uh, Balenciaga the house, is the competition house of name. Right. So what do you go by yeah. now? Now Mariah Balenciaga. Ted. She goes by Ted. <laughs> <laughs> Ted or Bill? <laughs> <laughs> I love now, uh, I, you may have heard a little bit about M Michelle's experience in the house scene. You, um, you're you from Atlanta. Atlanta, yes. GA. Um, tell me about the house scene, uh, the house ball scene in uh -huh. Atlanta, G Georgia. Um, it's actually pretty big. Uh, the House of Balenciaga was uh, founded in Atlanta, and our, our foothold was in Atlanta and D.C. Mm -hmm. um, it was really huge uh, late 90s to the early 2000s, and it's kind of waned off a little bit to just a few big ones every year. Mm -hmm. But there used to be a ball, at least two or three balls every month in Atlanta. And that gets expensive. 99. It's very expensive. What venues were, were they? Uh, they would be at Trax, 708. Uh, well, that used to be uh, Loretta's. 708 used to be Loretta's? Uh-huh. Right, because we, we talked about that. that um, I, I got my start at a club next door to Loretta's at 688. I love it's called Loretta's. Uh-huh. <laughs> 
Six eight eight Spring Street. Is that the Loretta's you, you were talking about? That's down on Spring Street. Uh huh. And it's uh, now it's a uh, kind of a jazz bar that right. club that you're talking about. Right. It's six eight eight. It was a punk rock club uh, back in my day um, yeah. that um, you know I used to perform at with my my band uh, down there because you know I lived in Atlanta. You had a band. It's in a bad band. I I lived in Atlanta from seventy six until. Uh, the mid 80s. Would you say you got your start in Atlanta or San Diego? I got my start in Atlanta, definitely for sure, because I went to the School of Performing Arts, which used to be called Northside School of Performing Arts, but now it's called North Atlanta up in Buckhead oh, on yes, Northside so Drive. What did you call this. me? <laughs> oh, Buckhead. <laughs> Oh, so you you were there when they had the Disco Krogers? And oh all yeah, that. Disco Kroger and oh, yeah. I was so born in the wrong generation. I swear. Now, are you born and raised in Atlanta? Uh, I was born and raised in Gainesville, Georgia, and when I turned nineteen, which if I do the math correctly, it was uh-huh. two thousand one, is when I moved to Atlanta. Uh huh. And I lived there until I just recently moved here this year oh, to L.A. to Los Angeles. Yeah. And what brings you here? What brings me here is just a change of pace. Uh, I wanted some different energy, um, some new inspirations. You know, I've had my ups and downs in the lovely roller coaster that is Atlanta. And mm-hmm. I was, uh, I'm at a place in my life where I can move on to the next level and don't have any ties to hold me back. Good for you. Now, um, there is a car. Is that, is that it's really annoying the shit out of me? I don't know. Is, there's a is car horn. Up, is uh-huh. that picking up? Do we need to? See, I told y'all, just for y'all out there in uh, Radio Land, we are in Compton and there are car <laughs> alarms going off. <laughs> um, so. For you, are we, do we need to stop? No. Okay. Um, so for you, in your in your picture and your the way you forecast your life, what does LA hold for you? You want to be a movie star? You want to be a recording star? You want to be a porn star? Or do you just want to live here in Los Angeles? Uh, well, actually, I want to get uh, I want to get my hair career back on track. Oh, that's right. She's a hairdresser. That's right. Hairstylist by trade. We all trade. love trade. Uh-huh. <laughs> So I just want to, uh, and L.A. is definitely the perfect place um, to pursue drag uh, commercially and yeah. nightlife and also pursue my hair career. Mm. Very it smart has a of very you. strong industry here. Because it is short-lived. We were talking about this. Yeah. You know, our show is on the air now, but who knows what's going to happen when it's done. We can mm. all go back to our day jobs or work in for, you know, 100 bucks a night at our local club. Right. I think that's smart of you, Mariah, to try to get in with, a, you know, yeah. Hasa Diddy Salon. Get in there and do your thing. I'm telling you, and then even just the 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 film and print and television industry yes. out here for even being behind the scenes. Because until I did drag, I was always a behind the scenes support person. Are you a wig maker as well? Can you do do you do wigs oh, yeah, for the I girls? Yeah, I make a lot of my own. Yeah, you do your own, but can you can you? Yeah, I, I can hook it yourself. I can whip out? it up. Yeah, All I right, can girl. I can hold myself out to the uh, for the hair pieces. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Did you ever work on any Tyler Perry productions in Atlanta? <laughs> <laughs> Medea goes to Mariah oh, I, oh God. to get her uh, hair in to the beauty shop. I um I worked with Tasha Smith, which um if you don't know Tyler Perry's productions is one of his uh, main characters in his TV shows. Uh, she plays Angela, the little crazy wife from uh, Why Did I Get Married. Oh my gosh! I but think her- she's probably asking herself that now. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> There's a little stuff in the tabloids right now, but oh, I I know her. Um, she's uh, she's actually from out here. She's uh-huh. um, uh, but she's on the show for better for worth. Is that what for she's better on? for worth? Yeah, Tasha. Yeah, yeah. Tasha. Tasha Smith. Smith. Mm-hmm. That's right. I went to actually went to acting uh, classes with her. You know, she's a twin. Tasha yeah. Smith. Yeah. Uh-huh. Phaedra, uh huh. Not Phaedra. Uh, but uh, her twin Tina a shaved head. <laughs> <laughs> what you laughing? Michelle almost did a Danny t- Danny Thomas spit, spit take yeah. <laughs> because we just said Tina, like Tasha and Tina. Like well, that would be normal name. That right. would be her name. It would be uh, either Tasha, T- Tanya, Tanya, uh-huh. or what else? Tasha, Tanya. Tasha, Tanya. What are the, what, what are other? Tiny. Michelle, Tina, Tanisha, Tanisha, Tamika, Tasha, and Tanika. Uh-huh. That's oh, it. God. That's her sister <laughs> name. <laughs> That's her sister <laughs> name. <laughs> Uh-uh. <laughs> so, um, right. So th- I, th- I would think that all the people who are in the uh, beauty business in Atlanta would somehow, I'm sure Tyler Perry supports a lot of people in the beauty business. Uh, yeah, he's keeping a lot of people uh, working uh, with the, the constant and the, um, what is it? The Does he only film there? 
Mm. He has a studio there. Oh, like he took over. He, I think he took over TBS or Studios, really? which the was the super turn- station. Yeah, the super station. Get out of here. Yeah. Um. Uh, uh. You know, when I moved to Atlanta all those years ago, the super station used to have a, their version of Saturday Night Live on there. What and was it called? I don't remember. Now but it's Jan Adult Swim. Uh, yeah. Right. right. Well. Well. Um. But uh, Jan Hooks, the late great Jan Hooks, genius. was genius. She was uh, on. She was part of this ensemble. Of people who were this part of this Saturday Night Live uh, was crew. it not necessarily the news? No, it wasn't that. It was it was uh, Atlanta's Ted Turner. It Turner's, was only shown there. Well, the Superstation, the TBS, they had uh, channels all over the eastern part of the United States, like Cincinnati. I think they had something in Cincinnati. Well, we didn't Indiana. get it in New York. No, oh. no I don't think no. No, but um, they had he had quite a little operation Is going it still up in his? there. Does he still own TBS? I don't think so. I think he sold it. Ted Turner. I think so. I don't know, child. Oh. I really don't. But um, Atlanta was happening back right. then. Yes. Yeah, I didn't get a commission off of it. So. Well, well. <laughs> and so you said Gainesville, but people from Gainesville say Gainesville, Gainesville. Uh, there's a whole lot of different pronunciations uh, coming out of because that's where Honey Boo Boo and them live down there, right? They live further they south. Uh, uh, Gainesville is North Georgia. Oh, that's like right. By the mountains. Right, because I'm thinking of Gainesville, Florida. Florida. Which is the up north towards the Panhandle. Yes, that's yeah. right, right. Gainesville, Georgia, is that near Lake Lanier? Yeah, actually, uh-huh. yeah. We used to live I used Lanier, to live Lanier. sending all my love. Oh, oh that's sending right. All my love to you. Oh, Sorry, my God. That was your freestyle God. break. Hang yes, on. yes. <laughs> Breakdown. <laughs> Thank you. We're very passionate about our freestyle music. We are. We are. And, and not a lot of people outside of the, the tri state area or no. the North. Chicago, East. too. They like the their Chicago, freestyle. Miami, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Connecticut. Right. Because eh, you were just talking about Kaiser's uh, album. And she, I thought with that the song Vietnam is a freestyle song. Well, you're saying that's more like a. A Miami, Miami ghost, my boo. It's more like my boo. Yeah. Right, right. But it's incredible either way. But it's like freestyle. Meat. It's like a southern southern freestyle. Right. You know, if that makes a black freestyle record. Yeah, why it gotta be black, Michelle? Because the best things are usually. <laughs> <laughs> and your, your mother still lives down in, in Gainesville? She lives in Atlanta. Oh, yeah. up, up in Gainesville. Yeah. Well, she she's in, in Atlanta now. Yeah. Your brothers and sisters? I do. I have one older brother, an older sister. Do you uh, like them? And a younger brother. Um, I love my two brothers. Um, oh, your sister but, got the attitude? No, no. I love her, but I still talk to her. But my two <laughs> brothers, I don't really talk to them as much. Uh, They're just a little... Can on, they... On their own path. It's not uh-huh. the whole gay thing. They actually okay. love gay. So they accept uh, you the for who you are. Queen. They actually love it. Yeah. But um, yeah, they're just a little goofy. Right. They're and older so, than you. Uh, my older brother and an older sister uh-huh. and then a younger brother. And okay, but the sister is the one you're more friends with. Oh yes, yeah, that's, that's my baby. And your heritage is Native American, was it? No, just mixed with black. Do and black white. and white? Yeah, okay. my mom is uh, German, Swedish, and Irish ancestry, which makes me an eighteenth of something. Right, <laughs> honey, that make you an octoroon. Right, octoroon, right. <laughs> octoroon. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I, I don't have I have no idea what Georgia is like now. I mean it you know, it was such a great, great time back then because it was part of this huge boom that had happened in seventy four when Andrew when Maynard Jackson was elected the first black mayor of Atlanta. There was this huge boom that was happening. Unfortunately, I think the cultural boom is is kind of done now. Everything is so commercial commercialized and whitewashed and Mm. um to me atlanta now has become the suburb of all the cities Mm -hmm. uh people move into the city and just don't like the city life so then they end up getting into politics and making Mm. everything so bland right melba toast Mm. so now it's uh we really nightlife and subcultures really don't have a a place to go or a place to hang out that's a shame and it really is it's tragic especially from what atlanta comes from Mm -hmm. both with the gay rights and Mm -hmm. civil rights it's very bland there now well I, that's that's part of the reason i had to leave obviously i needed to go to new york and do my thing but it was um, calling it was calling but you know um when i left this is my my story i left in 84 went to new york and new york promptly spit me out six months later <laughs> so i had to, i went back to atlanta i started go-go dancing at a uh, weekend's nightclub at the corner of 10th street and peach street which is now a federal reserve building <laughs> Um, yeah, oh, wow. it's right, right near Margaret Mitchell's house, where she oh, wrote really? "Gone yeah, with the right Wind." Yeah, the street. yeah. Um, uh, and then I stayed for a couple of years, and I moved back to 
New York in '87 and been there ever since. But um, and uh, get coins right. I had to get That's the coins the right. The year that we met is the year you moved back. Yeah. That's yeah. really. Think about that for a minute. Yeah. The year you moved back is the year that we met. Uh huh. Yeah. That's crazy it's, fate. It's beshared, Michelle. It's beshared. It was meant to be. Holy, meant to be. that's weird. Yeah. Serendipity. Yeah, it's serendipitous. And um, so, you know, that's when I got, but when I left, there, um, they were building all of these skyscrapers and tearing down all the affordable housing in Atlanta mm -hmm. so that um, all these new people could come and all of the clubs, all the of gentrification the gentrification and yeah. all of the artists. There was no place for people to live in Midtown anymore. Well, that's so what was so that's great what about Atlanta. Yeah, it was such an eclectic group of people yeah. all together, and now it really is just kind of like the nuclear family with the two point five kids. Yeah, even in the city. Yes, because it used to be like Marietta, Alpharetta, you mean Mayretta. Mayretta. Red, uh, uh -huh. places like that, you know, no, Snailville, oh God, Snailville, yeah, Snailville, yeah. and uh, uh, Winnet, uh huh, and Doraville, and all of them. It's a lot of Vils, Smyrna, oh, of Smyrna, Smyrna, Georgia. Georgia. Uh -huh. But um, yeah, no, but that's that's the natural trajectory of right. a city, and um, you know that's how it, it's cyclical. And you know, obviously, New York is experiencing that right now, and and. Trust me, whatever goes up will come back down. But that's why when if you are a bohemian, you have to be smart and ride the wave and try to find the cities where that's happening. Where do I'll, we go now? I, now this, is, this is a good question. I always wonder, where Maybe is it happening? California. Seattle. Right, right. No, but where is it happening? Seattle. I, I think it's interesting for the people listening right now to, to write in and, and tell us where that the crest of the wave, of the new wave of sort of affordable housing living you know for years it was austin for a minute but uh, i'm sure that's still very gay and very good is it but it's it's mass because of south by southwest right um, right all it's not the way it used to be because right. of all the population boom because of those people go there and see what great cities it is you know what, what a great city it is and yeah then they start buying up properties and that's what happened and you know i my money's on pacoima yeah, I think you're going to win. You know? One. I'm not sure about the art, the culture thing, but you'll definitely... Find affordable, you know, affordable housing. housing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no slam on Pacoima. We love Pacoima. <laughs> I just don't know if it's the mecca of arts. Right. I don't think gotta I'm going to rush to open a club there. No. There's got to be something, you know, because I, I remember about 10 years ago, I was in Akron, Ohio, working at a nightclub, and I walked down the main street, and you could see that the city had done work to bring people back into the inner I love city. That. But no one it else had work. followed suit. I don't know what happened with Akron, but if you remember, Akron was where Chrissy Hine and so many bands uh, had come the way Waitresses. So many bands had come out of Akron. Wait a minute. Let me back up. I love so many waitresses. bands come out of Ohio. Yeah. 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 It's Ohio players. Cincinnati, the Cleveland. OJs. Uh -huh. Everybody has come out of Ohio. It's just one of those places. Uh, uh, Columbus is a great city like that, too. Great city, great nightlife, great uh, affordable places, um, artistic, very yeah. drag, a lot of gay Yeah, there's community. a lot of drag up there yeah. in that area with Cincinnati and Columbus. Yeah. Wasn't uh, that queen with the uh, the boobs, for the breastplate from Ohio? Uh, Dayton. Oh, what was India her name? Farrah. India, India Farrah. Farrah. She's yeah. from Dayton. She's Dayton, 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 Ohio, yeah. Uh. We've had some other girls. She's in Vegas well, Mystique now. is up there now. Who is Mystique? Mystique She's up Madison in that area with penetration. Mystique. Wait oh, a minute. She, she moved. Madison. She moved from from Texas. Mm -hmm. She moved. Wait a minute. From Mystique was from Chicago. She was from Chicago, but she was she living in, in Dallas. Oh. Uh huh. Because she didn't want to upset her fans in Texas with her country couture. Remember? Uh huh. Oh right, right, right. Okay, yeah, right. That's right. Too. So she, and she lost a lot of weight. She, oh, does, she looks oh my good. God, and her skin looks amazing. She looks Wait, how did she lose the weight? Um, I Vomiting. Think she's actually doing oh, uh, the old-fashioned way. Right, she's doing yeah. it the proper way. Yeah. <laughs> like a lady. Like a lady. Right. Yeah. Like every woman should. <laughs> We don't condone bulimia. We do not it was condone, but it's a joke, people. Yes. Yes. But it's funny joke. <laughs> it's she funny is. Joke. She lost because I saw her on Twitter, and she she's looked real skinny. Yeah, she's doing like she's uh, skinny. She's, she's not skinny, no, but she's, she's not what she was. No, and I'm not trying to be shady. She's right. not skinny. She looks real she good. Looks really uh -huh. good. Yeah. yeah, she's very proportionate now. She is. She uh -huh. has to, she got them damn knock knees still, but she okay. looked good. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I love her. And her. No, I love a pair of Does knock knees. Does she go on the cruises and things? Yeah, yeah, girl. 
girl. She does. Yeah. Cheryl, she even she even fucked a little. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean buck? Oh, you know the the gay dance with the the pinwheels and uh huh. I don't know. It's a that eight count that they do. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, it- I just go rub myself on the stage. You know? Girl, <laughs> listen. Mariah is everybody's favorites because you get Mariah just the cocktail uh-huh. and she's your best friend through the I, whole cruise. Right, through the whole uh, cruise. And you do shows on the cruise? Yeah. They I only do have to do one. Yeah. It's the easiest gig ever. If yeah. you want to do more shows, like I do a cabaret. Yeah. And Jinx will do hers. You know, if you want to do a show and you have a show, yeah. then you do a show. Right. Other than that, you have one obligation. You do one drag show for an entire week. For, oh, you just have to do what? one show? Because it's split it. up into three different nights. Okay. It's pretty easy. Now, speaking of our favorite Seattle darling, Jinx Monsoon, she is also a fan of Dr. Jen's House of Beauty. They even have a lipstick named after our Jinxy, which is called Jinxed, which I think is really fabulous. Now, Dr. Jen's House of Beauty is a great company out of Seattle that makes healthy, non-toxic skincare and cosmetics in colors you actually want to wear. They're also a favorite of the queens, you know, Jinx and and Latrice Royale. Michelle has told me about them because they're all natural, and I know Michelle is really into that. Thanks to drag queens and burlesque performers, Atomic Cosmetics is now known around the world and to those who don't fear color from coast to coast. Tested on showgirls, never on animals. Now, their richly pigmented lipsticks are long-lasting and designed to never flake or dry on your lips while keeping their promise of all-natural beauty. Now, their stage-ready eyeshadows, blushes, and contour colors are highly pigmented, delivered with a minimum of filler, so they're soft to the touch, and it goes a long, long way. They also have the New 20 Skincare line, which is designed for those over 35, or as Dr. Jen says, where the shit gets real. (laughs) It's designed to battle the signs of aging and to keep your skin supple and fresh at any age. Now, for a 15% discount, go to AtomicCosmetics.com and enter the code RUE. That's AtomicCosmetics.com, offer code RU. Now, how many cruises have you been on? Um, I just got off my fourth one. Fourth one? Yes. You must enjoy them. <laughs> how many have there been? Uh, five? There's been five. Five. Because uh, I did four out of the five. Yeah, also. the first one was kind of a smaller group. Yes. You know, it was kind of like the pilot. There's only like yeah. five the queens on it, I think. Right. right. It's sort of like a search group, uh, you know, when they send out a ship, uh, a, a search party. It was right. a search party. <laughs> they discovered that you guys discovered Ca- Ca- Cabo San Lucas, we right? We did. Yeah. <laughs> We discovered Senior Frogs uh-huh. and Beer by the Yard. We found it, didn't we? Got it. Mariah uh, found it. Yes, leave it to me. Uh, oh, my goodness. So um, where, your, your cruises, are they always in Mexico? Uh, no, uh, the, the, we, uh, they just started the European the edition. The question was that. Are they no, all in Mexico? Are they always in Mexico? <laughs> no, cruises are all over. Oh, God. <laughs> This is going downhill real fast. Your cruises. Are they always in Mexico? Because <laughs> when I think of them. <laughs> when I came from. When I think of the cruises that the girls you're go on. You're thinking about the love boat. That's what you're thinking about. Because they always go to Puerto Vallarta. Puerto Vallarta. They always go to S. Yes, yes, what's the other one? Not Escondido. Oh, no, God. it's um, uh, 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 Acapulco. Yeah, okay, Acapulco. You yeah. think of the Lander and Sisters. Cabo and Cabo San Lucas, right? Yes. Is that the boat goes there? Uh-huh. <laughs> well, it's just, you know, I in my mind's eye, when I think of these cruises, I think they just go to Mexico. No. And, you know, it's a bunch of queens. You know, you got you get a lot of um, cut-rate plastic surgery in Mexico. Yes. So I think, well, why no, not? No, Detox came back looking the same yeah. as she went off. So. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> I we love did. Detox. We <laughs> did the European cruise first, where we left from Venice, Italy. You you guys flew to Venice. We flew to Venice, Italy, and we did Italy, Dubrovnik, Croatia. What? Yes. We went to Turkey. Turkey you guys Greece. were all in Europe. All yes. these queens walking around Turkey and Greece. Now that sounds well, Greece, fun. It's fun. It was really wait a minute. Fun. Tell me, you what you say about Greece? Greece, they're used to seeing gays walk the streets, oh, yeah. but not what so much. What city and where in Greece? Olympia. We went to two places. In, we went to Olympia and we went to Syphilis. Santorini. Not encephalitis, no. Santorini. 
and Olympia. Now, I- I've never been to Greece, and I've always wanted to go to Greece. Oh, my God, Rue. Are the men gorgeous? You'll oh. love Greece. Yeah, my God! Really, they're delicious. What's what? What? Okay, the, uh, of course Greece is going to be gorgeous. Yes. The men, what? What port of call <laughs> has the most gorgeous men in Europe that you guys went well, to? Italy. Oh, Italy. You know, I right. love me an Italian man. You know what? I love Italian men, but I like Italian men from Brooklyn. I'm not as That's crazy you about... like the attitude. You know what? I'm not as crazy about the Italian men in Italy. Oh, they're, and they're gorgeous. But I like the Italians from Brooklyn. That's because it's a different attitude. And they got fat asses. Yeah. You know, yeah, they, they don't... Do. They they're don't skinny have, in Europe. They're skinny in yeah. Europe. Yeah. I like the the, uh, the Italian men with the fat asses from Brooklyn. I like the fat Brooklyn. ass too, yeah. but there were some sexy mother effers on that crew Re- in, in Italy. Oh, really? Oh, and I was with my husband and kids, and even my daughter was like, Oh my God, he's so gorgeous. I'm like, I know. Let's ditch your dad and go find him. Yeah, no, guys. I didn't say that, but they're absolutely gorgeous. Really, really You brought gorgeous. the family with you? I them? did. I brought my husband and my children. It's the first time you've done it. Yeah, I couldn't go to Europe and not have them experience it, especially right. Lily, my older kid, who's obsessed with everything in the world, cultures and languages. Yeah. It was such an amazing experience. Honestly, mm. Mm. I wouldn't have traded it for uh, my life. We went a week before and did some of Italy. We also did Rome, Florence, and then lasted... Um, and Venice was the last stop, and then we left. Dubrovnik, Croatia was, I had no idea what to expect because I only know about war torn Croatia. Yes, yes. It was such beautiful an incredibly city. beautiful place, blown away. I had the best time in Turkey. Really? Yeah. We yeah. actually went uh, and walked around the wall. There's a, a wall built around the city in mm-hmm. Dubrovnik. Uh, mm-hmm. uh-huh, yeah. Old Dubrovnik. And um, walked around the whole perimeter, and it was crazy because people still live there because and it's so intimate and like, People are like literally stacked on top of each other. They right. shoot Game of Thrones there. Oh, really? Yeah, at that castle. Oh. Yeah. Had you been to Europe before? No, this is my first time. First time. So, Wasn't yeah. it amazing? It was awesome. Yeah. How? What was the weather like then? Yeah. When did you all go? Gorgeous. Actually, it was kind of hot. It was, it was hot. Yeah. Oh. We in, went in November. It was absolutely stunning. We lucked out. In November, it, it should be cold in November. It was though. so amazing. We only had one day of rain. And it was the day that we went to the original, the site of the original Olympic Games, which meant oh, yeah. more to my daughter since she's a track and field sure. than anything. And we were in floods up to our calves. <laughs> Lily did not care. I'm going to show you. It's the funniest picture. I'm going to text it to you later. It's her in the pouring rain with a poncho I found in the garbage can. <laughs> Everybody was running for shelter, and Lily's like, "God damn it, I'm getting my picture taken on this fucking." Track. Uh-huh, if uh-huh. it's the last thing I do and she's there like thumbs up in the <laughs> pouring rain in a poncho but she's got her picture on the original and that's track. the oldest one Lily Lily's the older one yeah yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah wow that sounds great it was amazing I knew that you guys were going I don't know it's just all sort of vague in my head I, I see things on Twitter and yeah. I see that there are things happening but I did I don't you know people are still kind of keeping hope that RuPaul is gonna get helicoptered in they ask time. me uh-huh. every cruise and I go no yeah Ru doesn't yeah. do well in this confined space situation yeah I am um, you know I people think I'm a social I'm actually an introvert I can pretend I, I act like masquerading. an ex- I'm an introvert masquerading as an extrovert yeah. and um, you know and because I don't drink or do drugs and I haven't for the past 15 years it is so hard for me to be around crowds of people. Isn't that well, crazy? It's, 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 Anxiety. It's, 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 it can really like bring yeah. that up. Well, yeah. what you do is you how I deal with it because I've never, you know, I don't ever never have. But even for me, who's at the clubs at two, three in the morning, it can be a bit much. Just mm-hmm. cusses like a sailor mm-hmm. that gets it out. That too. Yeah. But then you'll you'll notice that I disappear and I won't be at any of those <laughs> yeah. events that are once they get you know there's that breaking point. Yes. There's the point of being buzzed and having a good time and then they always cross the line and get sh- completely shit faced. Yeah. Where they're hanging all over you and telling you s- stuff you really don't want to hear. Yeah. Like how I looked prettier in 1990. But oh, like, you, know, my. you can't change that. But yeah. they're not they're not shady. They're actually really respectful and lovely. But you know what I'm saying where they go with the drunkenness. Yes. yes so that's yes. the point where I retire. Yeah. And that's when I go back to the room and I scrub my face and watch a movie. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that's how I deal with it. Because they are a lovely group of people. Wow. They're all there for love and just for the same love of drag. They respect it. They're good. You mean the people who go on the the, the fans? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, you know, I can do crowds for small increments, and of course, the the coffee enemas really help. Yes, they do. They do, especially for crowds. They're amazing, but. When you're pleasing, you are a crowd pleaser, Rue. No, I, you know, listen, uh, you know, I can do it. It's just that the battery runs out really fast. Mm-hmm. The battery, I'm talking about the battery. In, no, yeah. I'm not going to say I know that. I exactly no. what battery you're talking about, girl. I got 
at you. She's got a silver no, but bullet. It, it sounds <laughs> it sounds like fun. I just you know I don't I don't like being trapped. I like to be able to get away. Yeah, I know it's your mo. It's your thing. Yeah, and you do really well for the times that you're there. Yeah, that's way too confined for you. How many queens on average are on this ship of too many? Too many, yeah. yeah. Way too how, many. how many do you think? Like, well, uh, the Mayan cruise, which was we did go to Cozumel, mm-hmm. which is ironically in Mexico. Uh huh. But it did. We did go to Honduras and some other countries as well. But um, that had like forty something queens. It was like ridiculous. Did we? I thought our number went down from last year. I think they no are, no no no. It went up, but queen. three didn't show up last month. Oh okay. Because uh, I read that Alyssa missed her plane. Uh, uh, Allegedly, uh-huh. Mr. Plain. Uh-huh. Her and Laganja didn't show, and neither did Manila. Those are the three that. What last happens minute. to the people who they sort of sponsored onto the ship? I mean, who signed up under who them? Who signed up under well, them? Well, they get screwed without a group leader, and um, I think it's really unprofessional. Uh. With that said, there's not a miss. They'll have a moment of that sucks because I paid to be with her. Yeah. Right. But really, there's so much going on, and they meet so many of the queens. They meet every. We're so accessible that they get over it right away. So, Mariah, have you adopted when a queen doesn't show up? Have you adopted some of the their 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 patrons? What are they called? Yeah, we pick up their slack. Yeah, their yeah slack, because yeah. um, I'm a I'm a. You're a people, I'm a people person. person. I'm a people anyway. person. I think so, so many of the girls, they're either funny or they can sing or, you know, they have whatever their talent is. I, I really believe that once I get off stage where that's my energy release, once I get off stage, mingling with people and getting to meet people is what I think my real gift is. So having to be around more people is just... She's Bad always bonus. out with the people. Always, well, I can how say that. Very about southern of you. It is. Isn't it? it is very. It would. You would. Uh, you would disappoint your southern heritage. I, if you, you know how they keep me. They have. Uh, they dangle a shot of fireball at the end of a rope and just <laughs> walk she, me around the ship kidding. all night. She's not kidding. <laughs> Oh. She ain't kidding, girl. She's not exaggerating in the slightest. Oh, my goodness. It does sound like fun, though. So this is through Al and Chuck. Al and Chuck. Travel. They've been really wonderful, and they've been really supportive of the brand and really supportive of the show, and they're so excited to be part of it, and they see all the joy it brings to people. Really. It really yeah. does, and it's so good for the girls because they get out there. They get to sell their merch. They get to meet people, you know, it's just a really great experience. You get to see places maybe they normally wouldn't have been able to see. And no girl has um, has been left behind because she missed the por- the port of call or the uh, not yet, not yet. No. And so, how many are how many cruises are there a year? Two now. Well, normally there's one, but then mm-hmm. we tried the Euro as a test this year, and it went really, really well. And what I loved most about it, Rue, it was small. We only had 250 people in total, and they did that on purpose to see how it would be. Right, I awesome. Liked it 250 so much. people on the boat total. No, meaning in, in our, our group. In our your group. group. Yeah. Okay. Then it was. How many people are on the boat? Three thousand. What? Three thousand? Yeah. Mary. <laughs> well, they all had With oxygen crew. tanks and wheelchairs. Yeah. So you didn't really Oh, so have, right. Yeah, they had their own thing. If you wanted to get away yes. from them, you could. Okay. Yes. All right. It's all true. Right. It's true. So, you, so you've been living in L.A. for how long now? Uh, since 4th of July. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, and, and is it, had you lived here before? No. Um, actually, um, filming for the show RuPaul's Drag Race was Oh, I've my heard first of that time. one. Yeah. Yeah. It, you might have heard. It's on this little network called Logo. Uh-huh. Um... <laughs> Uh, that was my first time in LA ever. Right. So this definitely has opened me up to being a bi-coastal. Yes, you are. Are you bi now? I'm uh-huh. bi now. Oh, you're bi now. I'm bi-curious. <laughs> um, you know, it's interesting. I love that this show and this experience through this show has, um, you know, given these girls <clears throat> the experience to travel it's so much. It's because of you. It's because of the show. Don't, well, no, I don't on. know if it's a because of I'm me. I'm telling you right now. It's because of you. It's because of World of Wonder. It's because of your minds, the way you think. Without the show, I can tell you right now, these girls would still just be, and there's nothing wrong with the bar queen and the life that they have sure. at their their local bar. It's beautiful. And 98% of them are just doing that. There's a lot right. of them that don't get the bookings that some other girls do. Mm-hmm. And that's great too. But they would not be doing any of it. Without you and without the show and without Logo and World of Wonder. And that's the truth. It's just a beautiful amalgamation. It's a manifestation of everything coming together and allowing. This is why I get so upset when they take it. They don't, they take it for granted. So this is the moment. This is the time. Because of you, they're able to do this. Nobody would know who they are. Right. That's why when people speak out and say, I don't need you. You ain't paying my bills. They would have known who I was without you. Oh, please. Bullshit. <laughs> they would not have known who you are without you. You brought me back on the radar. You know, I was on the radio, have- but... Half of them probably wouldn't have their work if they weren't on the show. Exactly. And by so. work, she's talking all sorts of things to your body, <laughs> body and face. 
But with that said, yes, there's a big congratulations to you. And it, I can tell you, being the ambassador for all of us, um, it is a wonderful thing. It is God's works that, you, that you're doing. You are earning your wings. You're doing your mitzvah because really these girls are doing things that they never would have been able to do. Never, ever. And it's so incredible to see their faces. That's why I got so upset when a lot of them didn't even get off the ship. They'd be like, I'm going to go have a facial. I'm going to go drink. Girl, you're in Croatia. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So oh, right. I saw Shangela off the boat. I saw Manila off the boat. It was only like four or five. Saw so Darien really? Lake everywhere. Yeah. And, uh, and Mariah, like not a lot of them. I did every fucking tour there was to offer. I did every one. Oh, the ship offers yeah, land you can tours. Do, uh, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Why wouldn't you? Right, right, right. This is why we're here. Yeah. Uh, yeah so, I think, uh, uh, like you said, I think um, because a lot of the girls do travel a lot now, they are, are they do take it for granted. Uh huh. And it's just like you can't miss any of those opportunities. No, you're right. And we, Michelle and I, have talked about this. What happens is if you're in the business for a long time, um, you look back at this time and you realize, oh my goodness, I should have done that back then. But if you get another bite of the apple after you know things have waned for a while, you and you get a chance to come back if to it. If you're lucky enough. If you're lucky enough, that's when you can really appreciate it. You know and I, I definitely have because I, you know, in this business, and I've been doing it for a long time. Um, um, yes, you have. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, uh, it's it's lightning striking twice in the same spot is phenomenal. You just assume when you're young, oh, it's just always going to be uh-huh. like this. Yeah, right. it's not. No, Leah Remini was talking about it when she was on and saying, you know, when she was on the show, the first show that she did, when, was Saved by the Bell, yeah. you know, she lived it up or even uh, Living Dolls, you yes, know, she had yes. her first, uh, her own show and living it up and she knew it was going to be like this. And I'm her voice set. Got, I'm done. And uh-huh. she's like, oh, she uh-huh. had to go back to work, you know? Yeah. But that's the thing. It doesn't, most of the times, lightning does not strike twice. Right. So the the fact that it has a few times, we're lucky. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, with young people, it's hard. You cannot tell them that. They don't want to hear it. They ain't ain't trying to hear it. Yeah. And I've always been fortunate enough to have, uh, be around older people. I was the one kid that could hear adult conversation that wouldn't repeat anything. So Uh. they would let me stay around. (laughs) But uh, I've always been fortunate to have older friends and older mentors. So I've always learned, if not what to do, what not to do. Sure. Uh, what to appreciate and what to let go. So yeah, it's it's definitely been a benefit and a blessing for me to even have that. No, we are talking with Mariah Paris Balenciaga. Yes. Of course. Now you're from season three of from RuPaul's the Drag real Race. season one. What? <laughs> the, oh, what? <laughs> That's right, because that was your first season. Thank you. That's right, Michelle. That was Michelle's first season uh, yes, of season of the witch. That's always my joke. I <laughs> yeah. Know. Season three, the real season one, and the one and two girls. Pandora always gives me the look of death because <laughs> oh, Pandora was season, season two. two. Uh, uh, um, um, so tell me, what is your experience? People want to know what. How has your life changed since being on this show? What what happened? What happened immediately when you... The time between doing the show and when it airs, there's that sort of period where you can't say anything. You don't tell people what you where you've been. How do you handle that? Well, um, <clears throat> self-reflection. Uh-huh. <laughs> sure. A lot of self-reflection. <clears throat> uh, one thing, the most important thing, I think you've asked me this question before uh, during our reunion. Um, was what did I learn? And at the time, it really hadn't completely sunk in, mm. but I'd learned not to take myself so seriously, mm. but to take my craft seriously, but not myself. And um, I think during the show, I was so intense with competing and focusing on what was right in front of me mm-hmm. that I wasn't able to completely enjoy the moment. Mm. Mm. And so that is the biggest lesson that, that I've takes practice. That, yeah. That's a real, that's not the easiest thing to do. Yeah. It's, it's, so with that, and then, of course, also not until Drag Race did I actually perform for a living. I, I again, hairstylist by trade, so I've definitely honed in on my performance skills. And who do you lip sync? Um, I do a lot of Christina Aguilera. It varies. I do some Kylie Minogue. Mm. I do um, Thelma Houston. Thelma Houston's "Don't Leave Me This Way" is uh-huh. still in my repertoire. It's the best disco uh-huh. song of yes. all time. I, it really I is. It, well, I, well, there's a lot of best disco I'm songs. I'm gonna put that up there as yeah. Oh, it's top five. Yeah. You know, Brainstorm, if loving is real in my game, and um, uh, Amy Stewart, Knock, Knock on, on Wood. wood. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. the production That's on true. that. That's true. 
crazy, crazy. But you know, um, see now, if I were a girl like you and the, and and your look and your complexion and your, I would I would think I would I would. I would own the whole disco thing. I love that you do. Don't leave me this way. With the big hair, she does because her. Yeah, she, yeah it's she goes great. In. It's yeah. great, and I think um, if you just own all the disco stuff, like like if loving is real in my game, the live version by Betty Wright. Brainstorm does the definitive version, but Betty Wright in my day, well, in my day in the Atlanta clubs, the queens used to do the Betty Wright live version of. If loving is real, I love in my a live game. version too. I, I love a queen doing a live version. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, when I was growing up um, uh, down there, there was a group called uh, Mother's Finest, and the queens in Atlanta would do the live version of Mother's Finest song called um, "Baby Love," and it's live, and it is a winner. It is when they would also do "Party Lights," the live version by uh, Na- Natalie Cole. Uh, Do you see what I'm saying? Like she's like a friggin' right. encyclopedia. This no, one. but the, no, this is my era. I remember. I know. Every time I have a music question, I text her. Right. I get an answer right away. I just remember. But um, love. I love Kylie. But I, I, I would just, I would just, I would, if I, I would own that disco thing. I'm definitely gonna um, because you dance. I do something. I'm yeah. not quite sure what it is, but I do. Something. She does a lot of fuckery. Uh huh. Yeah. Splits uh-huh. and. You know, really? Spread she my does. Legs a whole open. Body, you know, yeah. It's you know, it's the, the finest great A trash. Listen, on the stage I you'll love ever it's the see. finest in faggotry it. with this one. I she love that. that. I yeah. I'd pay good money for that. You would, you would. Yeah. She's fun to watch. I wish I could see you know, I I don't see enough drag shows because and if I try to go, well, I went in Vegas and I tried to sneak in to see the well, show. Well that's like but, the divas. You mean like the impersonations? The, yeah, yeah. yeah. I tried to go I, I um I couldn't go incognito. Because you, somebody, you just can't. they just can't. Somebody saw me. I I walked in after the lights went down. Mm-hmm. You know, snuck in. Da, 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 da. Somebody saw me, and of course, some. You know, that was the end of it. And I I really can't enjoy it because right. people are looking at me, looking at the show. You know, right? It's so, true. It's true. Yeah, it's yeah. really fun to see. Which is my favorite part out of all of this. New new resurgence resurgence in my career is being able to travel around the world. And see the drag shows. Every time I see a new drag queen, I get so excited. Uh, it's like seeing it for the first time. What city, do you, in your opinion, has is the most burgeoning? How do I say that word? But no, bur- that's right. Burgeoning, burgeoning. <laughs> feels wrong. No, it's right. Um, burgeoning drag scene where it's like, wow, well, these girls got it. In America, on. see the thing is, in the UK, they tend to be really more excited about it than we are in the states because we've had it. Who, the audience or the queens? The queens, because uh. they're challenging themselves to do stuff that is not traditionally United Kingdom. Like uh. they're a cap- like they were raised on cabaret kind right. of old Priscilla uh-huh. drag. That's the way that they do it yeah. over there. Yeah. So now they're challenging themselves to be more like American queens without trying to act American, but they're going for the glamour and the beauty. And, yeah. and they mix it in avant-garde. It's just it. amazingly uh. gorgeous to look at. It's like, oh my God, you're so beautiful. What clubs? Uh, you you went in Manchester? Manchester, I love. They have a really special what club lot is of it? queens. The last know? one I did was AXM. Um, but we're gonna holy trinity. <laughs> uh-huh. Can you say that here? Um, <laughs> uh, but also Belfast, they have interesting. Like it's all different. Uh, I did a bar called West Five uh, most recently, and I saw some. And I America in London's next top drag queen. I amazing, amazing talent. Like mm. I was blown away. Wow, beautiful. I love a drag show. You know, it yeah. used to be down in Tampa. There were, um, was it Ybor City? Is that Ybor, Ybor City. Ybor and Ybor it's City. still, it's still. I always say it the wrong way first. I always say, okay, it's, I, you know, I've tried to get my brain to say I Ybor don't. first, but it's, I always say Ybor first. I know. I've done that with certain things too. Like no matter how many times you say, yeah. you just can't figure it out. Can't figure it out. And every time you know you're going to be wrong. Yeah. Every time. Every Ybor single City, time. Yeah. It's Ybor City. Still very huge. Used to be, back then, used to be clubs galore yeah. with all the queens and stuff. Right. They're still, they're still down there tipping around. Because you, now you work in the, all the clubs still in America. Yes. And w- w- for, in your opinion, w- what's the most burgeoning that's the word mm. um uh drag scene that you oh. think is most exciting florida it, it ain't la no no <laughs> no 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 and i love the queens in la they're yeah. just over it well it's just la and new york are just over it well, la has the club scene in la in general i think first of all it closes up at two o'clock right Closes yeah, right. up at two o'clock so you can't even get something started until 
midnight, you know. So Canada has some amazing ones. Um, Denver has a really fun, thriving. Yeah, but we tried to go in Denver, but I, I think it's just one night a month at Trax. Is it Trax? Trax. Yeah, I'm yeah. there for New Year's Eve. Yeah. I was there for New Year's Eve. <laughs> you were there. I was there for New Year's Eve. You know what? Oh, right. Yes. <laughs> Actually, uh, as far as, uh, I don't know about the talent level of the Queens, but I know that it's a lot more, uh, the crowd is more exciting and they give you more energy when we're going to these smaller towns and smaller right. cities. Yes, yes. That's when they really go crazy and go all out and it really like, like lights Louisville. that fire. Right, yeah. right. Places right. like that. Because J. J. Lee is in Louisville yeah, now, right? there's a club there called Play that all the girls go to and it's like um, called play date play play uh, that uh-huh. all the girls are at now and it's like wow. and that's where J. J. Lee is and that's in Louisville uh-huh. yeah um, it, you're right Mariah it's the smaller cities because there's such a passion that right. they, they want to be on the radar you know and yeah. they don't take it for granted they don't no. take the, the their drag community for granted no Columbus uh, is another city like that yeah. Ohio Columbus Ohio mm-hmm. yeah Wow. So, Not Columbus, Georgia. Oh, no. Uh-huh. Uh, no, no. Do you ever, you are, I doubt you'll find a club there. Yeah. Do you ever get back down to Georgia? Um, you know, I the devil been, went down to Georgia. And he had uh, uh, looking for a soul to steal. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I wonder if he found it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. All I'll have to check with... His, was his fiddle. Yeah. I, I'm going <laughs> to check with some friends who may know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. Let me know how that works out. <laughs> and so do you ever get back? Your mom's still there. Yeah, she's still there. My sister lived in San Diego uh, for some years, and she ended up moving to Atlanta two months before I moved out here. So oh, we kinda, weird. You we swap, swap yeah. spots. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, I'm from born and raised in San Diego. That's why it's so oh, weird. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. 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 Born and raised in San Diego. So close San Diego. to Tijuana. Yes, TJ. She ain't got nothing done for it. <laughs> You know, when I was in seduction, we used to play in, in a club there. Did you ever play Club O in Tijuana? I, I've heard, I've heard of it, but it was my niece used to go there. But you know, I left there right around the turn of the century, mm. uh, not the two thousands, the, the, the century the before. The nineties. Yeah. I got you, boo. I'm with you. A long time ago. <laughs> so this has been a lot of fun. Yes, we oh, learned a amazing. lot about Mariah. A lot about Mariah Paris Balenciaga. Uh, yes. Well, welcome to Los Angeles. Well, thank you so much. I feel so welcomed. And you're gonna be <laughs> frying some hair. Girl, I'm going to be burning, honey. Yes, some no <laughs> lie relaxes. Oh, gosh. Oh, press and curl. We weaves. Oh, hot comb. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, my hair would fall out of my head. If, yes. If I did any of those, I'd be bald. Well, you know, but you wear wigs. I wear pieces. I haven't worn wigs yet. Right. But I told you on at podcast episode one uh-huh. that I want to start doing some. I wore a lace front for Rocky Horror, and I was like, this is the T. Yes. This is it. Who made the lace front? Um, Somebody looked like Laverne Cox at uh, the... Did you, you didn't get to keep it, though. Yeah, I kept it. Oh, you kept it. You know what I made it? I bought it at Black Fox. The... Oh, you meant, you bought one of those um, man-made uh, machine yeah, ones? The ones, the lace front where it's like plastic on the lace. It's yes. not good, like soft yeah, lace. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. Bianca helped me pick it out to see... Bianca Del Rio. Yeah, if I would like a lace front because yeah. I could use her guy. Right. So I I loved it. It was so amazing for me just to put it on my head every night yeah. and take it off and my hair be there and not uh-huh. plus like it was fine. Right? I love it. This was the answer. Oh my so goodness. So I've yet to get my first lace front, but I think maybe I will. Oh, great. Well, I'm going to talk about that later too. I mean, you know, because a lot of people out there want to know uh, are, are easing into their first lace front. Yeah. So um, let's keep that on, on the radar. I'll, you put know? It, I'll put it down on some paper. All right. Well, Mariah, thank you so much for joining us. We learned so much about you and welcome to Los Angeles. Thank you for having me. It's always such a pleasure to come play with you and, and Michelle Vachachage. Michelle Vachage. Michelle Vachage. All right, kids. Until next time. Bye. Bye. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? If you can't love yourself, how in the hell you gonna love somebody else? Can I get an amen? And don't forget to subscribe on iTunes. If you can't love yourself, how in the hell you gonna love somebody else? Amen.